My father had a knack for traveling. Whenever he got holidays, we went on short trips. I was probably eight years old back then. My father rented a small cottage in the woods. It was a farmhouse type of area with scattered cottages here and there. It was a secluded travel spot. Most campers and hikers came there. At that time, we were the only lodgers staying on that property. At least, that's what the owner told us. My dad parked his car near our cottage. There stood a big lake right in front of the cottage. It was a small wooden cottage with two small bedrooms and a living room. I was loving the place. My father took me to the middle of the lake on a boat. We did a bit of fishing. He rowed the boat for some time on the lake. I was enjoying the boat ride as it was my first time. My mom sat on the deck and kept smiling at us. I saw colorful birds flying over our head. The green woods surrounding the lake were moving slowly with the wind. Suddenly, I spotted a huge tree on my left. It felt like someone was standing under the tree and watching us. Who is that, Daddy? I asked my dad and pointed in that direction. Right that moment, I saw the person vanishing behind the tree. My dad didn't see anyone. We came back from the lake. My mother set up small table chairs. She brought lunch with her. We sat down and started to eat. My dad was drinking beer, and I was eating an egg sandwich sitting right next to him. We were laughing and having a good time. After lunch, I thought to roam around a bit. I started to walk around. Don't go too far, Mia! My mother yelled. I picked up a wooden stick from the ground and started to walk. I was staying close to the cottage, but suddenly I saw a rabbit running around at some distance. I was just a kid, hence, out of excitement, I started to follow the rabbit. The rabbit jumped into a nearby bush. I ran there and started to move the bush with my wooden stick. Suddenly, I heard rustling footsteps behind me. I turned back and saw an average height man standing with a weird smile. He was holding the rabbit on his lap. He twitched his eyebrows at me and said, Looking for this rabbit, dear? Do you want to pet this rabbit? Um, but mom says they always run away. They won't if you put them in a cage. <laughs> I scratched my head and said, But I don't have a cage. I have one at my place. If you come with me, I can give you that. I turned around and saw my parents sitting near the lake and talking on their own. They were far from me, so I couldn't ask for their permission. I looked at the man again. He was standing holding the bunny like before and smiling at me. I know that was a huge red flag, but I was just eight years old and I wanted that rabbit. Okay, let's go. I agreed to go with this man. The man's eyes sparkled mysteriously. He started to walk while showing me the way ahead. After about five to seven minutes, we came in front of a small cottage. This cottage looked the same as ours. I remembered the owner telling us that we were the only ones staying on this property. Hence, I was a bit surprised to see this man staying in another cottage. Come on with me. I followed him without asking any question. He pushed the main door and we got inside. As soon as I stepped inside the cottage, I smelled something really bad. It felt like something died in there. Sit here. I'll bring the cage for you. He handed me the rabbit and went to the room on his left. I sat on the couch quietly. The entire cabin was very messy and dirty. Muddy clothes were scattered all over the place. I was wondering how could someone live like this, just when the man spoke from the room. Can you come help me, dear? I got up and went to the room. The smell grew stronger this time. I realized that it was coming from this room only. The room was very dark. There was a window on my right side, and a torn, dirty rag was hanging from it. I guessed it to be the curtain. There were small holes on it from which sunlight pierced inside the room. It took me some time to figure out that there's a bed in this room, and someone is lying on it. At first, I thought it must be that man. But then as my eyes adjusted with the darkness, I saw the man standing next to that bed and speaking to the person who was lying on it. See? I, I brought her. Look. She's standing there. Suddenly, the person lying on the bed started to get up. I could hear heavy breathing. Come here, dear. Come here. 
She's got so many candies for you. Come on. The man started to call me to get close to the bed, but something didn't feel right anymore. I realized I shouldn't have come with this man. My mom must be worried for me. I, I better get back. As soon as I said that, I saw the man's facial expression change. He almost jumped on me and grabbed me. I started to scream. The man lifted me on his lap and said, Touch her, honey. She can take your disease away. Take her in your arms. Come on. I was throwing my hands and legs in the air while screaming for my life. The man started to take me close to that person lying on the bed. The reeking smell grew stronger each second. The man reached the end of the bed and I kicked him on the face while grabbing the curtain of the window. The man fell on the floor holding his bleeding nose. I fell on the floor as well and that entire curtain came off from the window. The room filled with sunlight and I saw a horrified looking woman sitting on her bed. Her face was rotten. Her skin was coming off. Blood and pus were all over her body. She looked like a living corpse. The disgusting smell from her body made me nauseous. I screamed at the top of my lungs. The woman started to crawl towards me. She stretched her bony, ugly hand to grab me. I screamed and moved back like prey in front of the predator. Suddenly, my father bolted inside of the room. Mia! Oh my god. He immediately ran towards me and grabbed me from the floor. The woman was panting and throwing her hands in the air. She was dying to touch me once. We immediately came outside the cottage, and I saw cop cars standing outside the cottage. I don't remember what exactly happened after my father took me out of that cottage. Probably I fainted. But the story unfolded, shocking the hell out of us. The man and the woman were escaped convicts. They broke out from prison and came into these woods to hide. While living in the wilderness, the woman was infected badly. She might have been bitten by some venomous insect, leaving her to rot like a corpse. The woman knew witchcraft, and this couple believed that if she could get an innocent child, she can get better again. They thought to run a ritual by placing a child onto her lap. By touching this child, she wanted to transfer her disease to a different body. This is why the man lured me into the house. The paramedics took the woman to the hospital, where she died within a week. The man was sent back to prison, with another charge of attempted abduction. I still can't get rid of the image of that sick woman crawling towards me like a corpse, and stretching her rotten hand to grab me. I do not go on trips that include forests or cottages anymore. Before starting the story, I would suggest you guys to go subscribe to the channel. It turns out that most of you guys who watch me aren't actually subscribed. So, if you like the content and want to support the channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. This happened in my college days. I'm an extroverted person, so I like meeting new people and making friends. Within the first semester, I made quite good friends, and we all often hung out together. There was a guy in our group named Steven. As students, we mostly stayed as paying guests or in hostels. Only Steven owned a house on the outskirts of the city. We were all young and looking for thrills all the time. Steven's house became the main place of our weekend parties and a popular place to hang out. We mostly spent nights at his place after getting heavily drunk at a party. The house had four bedrooms, two on the upstairs floor and two downstairs. Steven's room was the biggest in the house. Even though the house was spacious, Steven's room felt claustrophobic to me. Maybe it was because everyone got high in his room and drank there. Steven rarely cleaned the house, hence there was always a funky smell in the air of the home. We were a group of five people, including Steven. Molly and I were the girls in the group, and there were Robert and David. Molly and David were dating at the time, hence they were always busy on their own which left me hanging out with Steven and Robert most of the time. Steven was a cheerful, happy-go-lucky guy. Maybe this is why none of us could see it coming. Steven had a troubled childhood. His father was an alcoholic. His mom divorced his dad when Steven was in high school. Since then, Steven never saw his father. 
He heard from his mother that his father died in the hospital due to liver failure last year. This house once belonged to Stephen's father, which his mom inherited after his death. Stephen hardly talked about his father, but whenever he did, we could see a suppressed feeling of sorrow on his face. What felt weird to me was even though Stephen's father lived in this house, there wasn't a single picture of him anywhere. None of us showed any curiosity to know about Stephen's past, because it would have been too much to step into his personal life. Every Saturday, we traveled to his house and spent our weekends. As time passed, we all started to notice weird things in Stephen. He never liked opening the windows of the home. There was a corner table in his room that had a Bible and a statue of Jesus Christ. It was set up by his mother because Stephen told us she's very religious, but never once saw Stephen touch any of it. One day, Molly went to lit a candle on that table. Stephen became so uncomfortable immediately. He stopped Molly from doing so and said, Let those things be, Molly. Anyways, Mom will come next month to take all of these with her. So we ignored it and let it be. The more we stayed at his place, the more we realized that there was something not right about our friend and his house. We all started to have nightmares and feel unnaturally cold around the house, even in summer. One weekend, I was alone in Stephen's house. Molly and David were on their way. Stephen and Robert went out to get booze and dinner for everyone. I decided to stay at the house in case Molly and David arrived early. I took a shower and was going upstairs to change into my pajamas. The bathroom was downstairs and I had to pass Stephen's room to take the stairs. As soon as I came in front of the room, my jaw dropped. I saw a bald man sitting on Stephen's bed, facing his back towards me. He wasn't wearing any clothes, as I could see his bare back. Excuse me? Who the hell are you? How did you get inside? The man didn't say anything. He didn't even turn back. I started to walk towards the main door because I was already scared to see a stranger in my friend's house. The man suddenly started to shake his head in a very bizarre way. He wasn't turning back, wasn't speaking, just shaking and moving his bald head vigorously. I screamed seeing this horrible incident and came out on the house porch in my bathrobe. A car pulled in the driveway and I saw Robert running to me. What happened, Pamela? There's... there's a man inside, he's... I couldn't finish my sentence as I was still gasping for air. Robert rushed inside and checked every nook and corner of the house. He even checked all the doors and windows. There's no one in the house. Pam, are you sure you saw someone? I walked inside while my heart was still beating like a wild horse. I peeked into Stephen's room, but there was no one there. The man was gone. It was as if he disappeared into thin air. What happened? What's going on? Stephen kept the bags and asked, Robert laughed and said, Pam just got scared. She's not used to living alone, I guess. Our little Miss Pamela. <laughs> I felt embarrassed because at that point I also started to think it was just a hallucination. But Stephen didn't laugh. He came close to me and said in a low voice, Did you see someone? Yeah, I was going upstairs just when I saw a bald man sitting on your bed. He was... Did you see his face? No, I couldn't. Come on, Steven, you don't actually think there was a man in this house. There's no way he could escape the house without using the front door. And if that happened, we would have all seen him. Also, I checked the entire house. There's no way he can hide either. Robert replied. Steven didn't say anything. He went to the kitchen to arrange for dinner. I went upstairs, changed into my pajamas, and kept thinking about what just happened a few moments back. Why did Stephen ask me if I saw the man's face or not? Did he also believe what I saw was real? After dinner, everyone sat down and started to watch a movie. We were drinking beer, and Molly and David couldn't come that day, so it was just the three of us that night. Robert and I were sitting on the couch, while Stephen stood near the kitchen window. He just got awfully quiet. I went to him and asked, Is everything okay, Stephen? He didn't even look at me. The awkward silence was becoming very uncomfortable. I decided to go to bed, and as I turned to walk away, Stephen said, I talk to my father sometimes. What? 
What are you saying? I asked in a shocking voice. Robert immediately paused the game and looked at him with shocking eyes. I have this picture of him in my wallet. I talk to him sometimes. I ask him why he left me. Why he never came to see me or even talk to me. Hey, I get you're sad about all this. Maybe you should talk to your mother about this sometimes. I got spooked hearing Stephen. It is really weird to talk about a dead person's picture. I said in a broken voice. Um, Stephen? This is not natural to talk to a dead person's picture. You should stop doing that. I mean, but he replies to me. I feel him in this house. He comes to see me when I'm asleep. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. Robert and I kept looking at Stephen's face. He was smiling in a very creepy way. We could tell his mental condition is not stable, that he needs medical supervision. We decided to lay him on the bed and inform his mother about his unhealthy behavior the next day. Stephen was drunk too, so he didn't resist us. Robert and I carried him to his bedroom. He kept muttering, Trust me, guys. He talks to me. He comes. He comes. Stephen passed out on his bed. Robert and I came out and sat in the living room. Both of us were freaking out hearing Stephen's words. We watched the movie for some more time. Don't exactly remember when, but Robert and I both fell asleep. I dozed off on the couch and Robert was sleeping on the floor. I woke up and found the eerie house in complete darkness. There was a chilling sensation in the air of the house. I was feeling very thirsty. Hence, I got up and started to walk towards the kitchen to get some water. I thought of checking on Stephen, so I tiptoed to his bedroom. As I pushed the door, my heartbeat stopped for a while. That same bald man was floating over Stephen's chest and watching him with blood-red eyes. He wasn't blinking, just watching him and breathing heavily. A foul smell choked my lungs. It was the smell of rotten flesh. I couldn't move, couldn't scream. The man then stooped down and sat on Stephen's chest. He then opened his big mouth and started to suck the life out of my friend. I could see Stephen's soul drifting in the air and going into his mouth. Stephen was becoming pale and bloodless. This demon was killing my friend. I couldn't hold it longer and I screamed at the top of my lungs. The demon looked at me and I saw blood dripping from his wide, burning eyes. His hollow, dark mouth made my skin crawl. Robert woke up hearing my scream. Pam, what happened? Stephen, that guy. I sat down on the floor holding my face in my hands. We had to hospitalize Stephen that night. His blood pressure broke down rapidly. Doctors could not make out how a young boy's pulse rate fell rapidly. His heart could have stopped that day if we didn't bring him into the hospital at the right time. That was the last time I went to Stephen's house. I still talk to him sometimes, but he never mentions his father. I don't think that evil spirit I saw that night was Stephen's father. He probably latched itself to Stephen when he kept talking to his dead father's photograph. I still think that haunting spirit is staying in that house. My name is Adam, and I'm a financial broker. My work schedule is always crowded with meetings and appointments. I had to take so many phone calls that often at night in my sleep, I woke up randomly thinking my phone was ringing. I barely get the time to hang out with my friends or family. My girlfriend broke up with me recently because I was too busy to spend time with her. To be honest, that's when it hit me, that I need a break from work. It's been three years since I joined this company, and since then I have not taken a single leave. So I decided to go to a small hill station and spend a week or so. My leave request got accepted immediately for my dutiful performance so far. I came home from work one day and started to prepare for this long-needed trip. I booked flights and a room in a hotel at the hill station. I wanted to stay close to nature, away from the crowd, so I chose these not-so-famous serene hill station. After landing at the airport, 
I hired a cab to reach the exact location. Within half an hour, we left the city area and got onto the twisted mountain roads. At one side stood the steep edge meeting the green mountain valley. On the other side, huge mountains. I opened the glass window of the car and let the cool breeze touch my face. Is this your first time here, sir? Yeah, it is. I'm staying at the Holiday Inn Hotel. How is that place? It's one of the oldest hotels in the Hill Station. But you are lucky. You got a booking just at the right moment. Why do you say that? The hotel was closed for one year. It was renovated and reopened last week. I see. Good. They renovated the place. No, sir. It wasn't for renovation. It was for the suicide. I was startled to hear this, so I said confusingly, Suicide? Who committed suicide? The owner's wife. She was going mad. People say she roamed the hotel at night scaring the guests. The owner decided to send her to a mental institution. But right before that night she was about to be shifted, she jumped from the hotel roof into the wild valley. It took two days for the cops to discover her body. When they found the body, it was a vicious sight to watch. Coyotes and wolves tore flesh from that poor woman's body. Oh, what a horrible scene. The car driver closed his eyes, recalling the dead body. A weird feeling of discomfort grabbed my senses. I started to ponder on the thought, will it be fine to stay at a place where someone committed suicide? But then my rational senses replied, if we think like that, we will not be able to stay anywhere because someone is always dying here and there. Also, the driver just said that the hotel had been renovated. When I reached the hotel, my eyes dazzled with the beauty of the view. Being surrounded by blue, snowy mountains, this three-story wooden hotel stood like an ideal place to escape the busy city life. I checked in and a hotel boy escorted me to my room. The room was cozy and the view of the valley from the window refreshed my mind. I kept my luggage in the room and decided to eat something. I locked the room and started to walk towards the dining hall. I was near the dining hall when I saw an old tall man standing there and talking to the hotel boy. He looked at me and I smiled out of courtesy. Welcome to the Holiday Inn. I hope you're enjoying your stay, the old man said. Yeah, this is a beautiful place. I replied with a smile. Good to hear that. I am John Kipsky, the owner of the hotel. Please make yourself at home. Do not hesitate to ask for anything. He then looked at the hotel boy and said, Attend to our guest, Matthew, and left. Sir, please come with me, Matthew said. He took me to the dining hall. I sat down at a table, and the boy went to the counter to call the waiter. So far, I haven't seen any other guests. I was looking around when my eyes went to the wall in front of me. I saw a huge oil painting hanging from the wall. I got up to see it properly. It was the portrait of a woman. She was wearing a black gown and had an ordinary face. The only striking feature was her eyes. They were extremely creepy and bright. Once you look into her eyes, you can tell something is odd with this woman. Her stare was so uncomfortable that I felt she could see into my soul. The even more disturbing thing was the way the painter drew her eyes. It felt like she was following everyone in this room at all times. I was contemplating on these thoughts when someone spoke in a broken, deep voice. That's Mrs. Kipsky. She's dead. I turned around and saw a man dressed in the waiter's costume standing right next to me. He had white hair and looked like someone who had been there for a while. I said awkwardly, I was just looking at the painting. I then walked back to my seat and started to look through the menu card. The waiter stood quietly with a blank face. I was taking quite a bit of time to decide on what to eat, but this guy seemed like he had a lot of time to spare. He waited patiently until I ordered my food. As long as I ate there, I couldn't shrug off this uncanny feeling of being watched by that woman in the painting. I finished as quickly as possible and went back to my room. I smoked a cigar sitting near the window and watched the sunset behind the hills. I don't remember when I dozed off on the couch. I woke up hearing muffled laughter in my room. 
I opened my eyes and saw a woman figure sitting on the couch like a frog. Her hands were placed on my legs. Her face was full of wrinkles. She was wearing a black gown. There was a cruel smile on her face, but her eyes were coming out of her eye sockets. Seeing her eyes, I could recognize her. I just saw her painting in the dining hall today. Yes, it was Mrs. Kipsky. But, but you're, you're dead. <laughs> she stood up on the couch and started to cough terribly. Hearing her coughing like this, I got up. She was gagging like she couldn't breathe. Then she suddenly stopped and said, Would you like to see a magic trick? She started to pull her tongue out with her very own hands. I screamed in terror and couldn't believe my eyes. She was pulling and pulling, and her huge red bloody tongue was coming out of her mouth. I will never forget that scene. Hearing my scream, the hotel boy came rushing to my room. Thank God I didn't lock my door. He bolted inside and switched on the light. What happened, sir? Is everything all right? I looked around while gasping for air. There was no one inside. Only the window was moving with the cold wind. I left the hotel the next day. I went to the dining hall for one last time. My eyes went to the painting. Believe me or not, I saw Mrs. Kipsky wickedly smiling at me.